something, you can be it. Yes. 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 You gotta see it. That's it. You can be it. See, I, I may not have the million dollars that, that I, I, I want, but I know I'm a millionaire right now. So I walk like a millionaire. I talk like a millionaire. That's why some people get mad when you walk with a, a, a swag of God. That's why when you walk and you know you got your head up, people are going to get mad, aggravated, they're going to look at you weird, but it's all good. It's all right. Hey! Because I'm going to still love them anyhow. I'm going to show them the, the love of God. I'm going to show them how God works. Jesus. I'm telling you, nothing happens by accident. Sometimes we think things happen by accident, but it doesn't. Right. What's in your subconscious mind That's happens because right. you meditated on it and yes. got in there and it stayed until it came to fruition. Say something! Hallelujah. Visualization is not some mystical, strange practice. It is simply seeing yourself the way God already sees you. Yes. It is seeing yourself the way you want to be. Yes. So if I want a house, uh -huh. and I, I want the, the, the wife, I got to see myself there. That's right. I got to keep the images in front of me. Yes. I got to make sure I see it all the time. It's keeping me in line. It's keeping me projecting what I want. Imagination, which is extremely powerful. The way we see ourselves in these pictures that we create over time not only affects our immediate, immediate attitude, but if we continue to dwell on it, the image will become permanent in our subconscious mind. Once something is in the subconscious mind, it's just like gravity. It'll draw you towards it. Remember, if you, this is a real simple example. If you watch TV and you watch negativity on TV, and all you see is, is people, you know, doing, de 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 degrading themselves, you know, just selling themselves short, and that's the only image you see. That's right. Eventually, that's what you become. Because you put that in your vision. And it got embedded into your subconscious mind, and you were drawn towards that. That's right. That's right. But when you put the vision that God has given you straight in front of you, when you can hear the word of God and get faith, when you can see the things that God sees for you, you won't tolerate no mess. You won't tolerate nonsense. You won't tolerate Because I can see more. I can see above. If I hang out with people. 
that are at the same place where I'm at, we gonna be thinking we all right. Come on. We thinking we doing good because we at the same place. But I need to hang around somebody that got some more wisdom, that got some more knowledge, that knows the truth. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Jesus. That word is on the flat. Hallelujah. Y'all better catch it. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Take your time. Hallelujah. So, I want to bring us to the book of, hallelujah, Philippians. I told you, I want y'all to write these things down. Because God is seeing this. It's not me. This is the word of God. If you get in your scripture, you will know that God is saying this. See, that's where wherever I go, I carry my pen and my paper. And I'm ready to write something down. Because God may be saying something. And I got to write it down. I got to see. It got to be before me every time. That's it. That's it. Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 Thank you Jesus Hallelujah Thank you Jesus I have it I just want to turn to it with you Thank you And it says finally brethren Whatsoever things are true Whatsoever things are honest Whatsoever things are just Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You got to think on them. You got to keep them in front of you. Paul is telling us that we have to program our minds with thoughts that are pure, honest, good, true, virtuous. The enemy is always trying to play with our minds. Yes, yes, that's right. Y'all yes. can right now. The enemy is playing with your mind. Yes. He's trying to make us feel sleepy, so then we, we we stop thinking, we stop processing, and our mind goes somewhere, and we can't hear what God is saying. Yes. You can go to school all you want, but if your mind is not contented with what is going on, if you're not focused, if you're not tuned in what's going down, you will miss it and go above your head. That's right. That's right. The word has to be in your mind. You gotta keep those things which are pure, which are good, which are lovely in front of you. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. That's good. When I'm in church, I got to make sure that I, I submit by that. I'm just thinking, oh, God, you, you blessed me. God, you brought me so far. You, God, you did so many great things. God, you brought me from near to here. And I see it. I'm thinking on the blessings, the achievements that God has done. So I stay focused. So I don't get off track. So I don't get discouraged. So I remember that God is faithful. We have to make a conscious effort to fixing our mind towards these things. Yes. That means you have to purposely do it. Purposely. You can't think it's just going to happen. You got to purposely remember these things. You got to purposely remember the victorious things that God has done. That's right. That's right. That's right. On purpose. That's right. My God. Yes. Mm. Nothing happens by accident. Huh? Nothing happens by chance. Uh, Jesus. Donald Trump is not where he's at by accident. That's right. But he had a vision. Yes. And he couldn't see nothing else but the vision God gave him. Yes. That's right. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. And I, I want to take you to Habakkuk. I told you it's going to be quick, easy, but you're going to learn. We're going to learn something. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, and the Lord answered him. Habakkuk was grieving his prophet, and he would say, how could you let the Babylonians come against me? What is going on? So God had to answer Habakkuk, and the Lord answered me and said, 
write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that read of it. So when you get the vision that God has placed inside of you, you got to write it down. You can't put it in all its complexities with big words. You got to make it plain so that when you come back to it, you will understand what God was saying. You got to make it simple. It's the simple things. That's right. That's right. Jesus. That's right. Jesus. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. God didn't tell me when I was going to get where I was supposed to. My mind figured out from societies, laws, and rules that at this time this should happen. At this age, this should happen. But see, when you come into God, scratch that off. Because you can delay yourself from That's right. blessings That's right. That's right. if you think that you're waiting to a certain age to mature. Come on. You will delay yourself if you think that you're going to wait for God to do something. God will do something and a two-year-old baby that it took five people and in their fifties to do. Come on. Amen. Jesus. I, know that. I know Josiah reigned at eight. Yeah. He was reigning at eight. That's so why are we waiting until we get forty? When God gives you the vision, write it down. Amen. Put it on your table. Yes. So you can see it every day. Put it in your car so you know where you're going. Put it in your office so you know when you're at work, you know what God is really saying. Put it in your back pocket. Put it in your wallet. Put it in your pocketbook. Jesus. When I'm in my room, I, I, I bought a desk. My desk is all white. My chair is all white. So when I sit down, I have clear thoughts. I, my glass is clear. I, I need clear, fresh, new creativity. When I'm reading and when I'm doing, I need, I need to be in, not in limits. Come on. So I create an atmosphere where I can come and hear God and put my word out, read my magazines, see where I'm going, write my vision, keep it playing. Come on. Jesus. Mm -mm. Mm. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Hallelujah. We must write the vision. Write our goals down. The Bible also says in Proverbs 29 and 18, when there is no vision, the people perish. Amen. If we are a people who don't have a vision, Come on. we don't see what God sees. That's right. When God gives us the vision, see, see, it's, it's our fault. Because God does give us a vision. But we sometimes didn't write it down. Sometimes we told the vision to somebody else. Sometimes we we just we didn't we didn't really think that it was God. God, you really said that to me? See, I told you that's why I preach because I know it gives the devil a headache. Because yeah, yeah. the devil did not want me to go where I'm supposed to go. Come on, come on. So I gotta do what God says I have to do. That's right. And I'm giving him a headache. But I may not want to do it. That's right. God gave me a vision. Yeah. And I had to write it down. And I had to do what it said it shall do. Because it's gonna come to pass. But it's happening because I see it. It's in front of me. The best thing is, I cleared away all the fog that was in front of me. 